This is a CBS News special report. I'm Nora O'Donnell with John Dickerson and Gail King in New York. President Trump has just canceled plans for a summit meeting with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. In a letter to Kim, Mr. Trump says a meeting at this time is inappropriate. Weijia Jang is at the White House with this breaking story. Weijia, what can you tell us? Good morning. Oh, good morning to you. The White House just fired off this letter signed by President Donald Trump a few minutes ago, and he says due to the recent shift in tone, due to the language, he believes it is inappropriate to hold this summit. Now, remember, just overnight, an aide to Kim Jong-un was using extremely aggressive language against Vice President uh, Mike Pence, calling him a political dummy for bringing up the Libya model again uh, in a recent interview, and perhaps that is what triggered President Trump uh, to decide not to have this summit. But it certainly is an extraordinary development because just yesterday, sources here at the White House told us uh, that this weekend, a delegation of top aides would in fact be going to Singapore for the second time to work out logistics, to sort out um, the final agenda for this meeting. So this is unexpected, especially because President Trump has been so careful uh, in recent weeks, especially the past week, to say, we'll see. We don't know if it's happening. We want it to happen. But whether it happens is really up to Kim Jong-un. All right, Weijia, thank you. We should note, too, in this letter, which is clearly the president's voice, I and mean, I don't yes. remember seeing a letter about this. He says, sadly, based on the tremendous anger and open hostility displayed in your most recent statement, I feel it is inappropriate at this time to have this long planned meeting. It then goes on to say this is a truly sad moment in history, but he does leave the door slightly yes. open. Yeah, the last paragraph in particular. If you change your mind having to do with this most important summit, please do not hesitate to call or write me. But what's interesting is because there was a really strong rebuke of Vice President Pence, calling him, as we just pointed out, a political dummy, dummy and also threatening a nuclear to nuclear showdown. And so it did, it did merit a tough response from the United States president. Interesting. The president also in the uh, second to lap, last paragraph thanks Kim Jong-un for the release of the hostages and said that was a beautiful gesture and was very much appreciated. So he's got one foot on the brake, one foot on the gas here, and now it's up to us to try to figure out and the, and the North Koreans to try to figure out what's going on. Senior global affairs contributor Ian Bremmer joins us on the phone. Ian, this week the president also seemed like he was softening before this letter. He did two things. He walked back that idea that North Korea would, would suffer the fate that Libya did. And then he also said that he might be okay with the delay of ending the nuclear program, that it wasn't a precondition for talks. What do you make of all this? Yes, he also said that Mike Pompeo would be uh, in charge uh, of the negotiations um, and uh, that John Bolton was not going to be writing point. Uh, but to be clear, he's also been quite concerned that the Chinese uh, were undermining him. Uh, and so as a consequence, uh, this is clearly I would say, a big thing is how much this is linked to the U.S.-China relationship. The market should clearly go down with concern that uh, tariffs, uh, for example, by the U.S., the CTE issue, are going to be right back in front of everyone as a consequence. The support for the North Korea meeting was one of the biggest reasons why Trump chose uh, to hold off on hitting the Chinese hard. This is going to be the big disappointment from his perspective. Uh, there's also the question, of course, of what he's going to do with North Korea. Yes, uh, he left open the door for potentially a meeting going forward. But this, the language that we see here is pretty harsh, I would mm -hmm. say. It's not about an expectation of getting back together with Kim Jong-un in a couple months. It's more that Trump made an offer, mm -hmm. it was rebuffed, and now they're in the job house. What we really need to see is whether or not this means the talk of preemptive military strikes comes on the table. Let's see what Trump's advisors okay. say. Let's see what Trump says. Yeah, Ian Bremer, you brought up, of course, that. And one, there's one ominous line here in the president's letter where he says, you talk about your nuclear capabilities, but ours are so massive and powerful that I pray to God they will never have to be used. Ben Tracy is in the northern part of North Korea with officials there. Ben, what have you learned? Well, Nora, it's the middle of the night here. We're actually on a train. We just left North Korea's nuclear uh, test site. This is going to come as a big surprise to people here. Obviously, we've been talking to uh, the folks that we're working with, our government guides about the summit. Uh, people here had been, uh, you know, wondering if they thought the summit might fall apart, if the U.S. might back out or if North Korea might. 
Um, but I think this will really come as a surprise. North Korea literally just announced that they were shutting down its nuclear test site. We spent all day there today where they were blowing up test tunnels and saying they're no longer going to uh, conduct any tests there. They view that as a sign of goodwill. They view that as something they wanted to do before the summit with President Trump. Now that that summit appears to be off, uh, this will definitely come as a surprise here. And Ben, just to clarify, I mean, they were putting on a spectacle for you right there with the blowing up of those tunnels to uh, put on a show of sorts? Yes. You know, they, they blew up the three tunnels that remained. Uh, they claim that makes the site unusable. Uh, the problem we had, the only people there were some journalists, and we're not experts, uh, you know, on what it takes to shut down a uh, nuclear test site. There was no outside expert there who could verify that that actually means that that site is now unusable. Mm. Uh, but they did put on uh, quite a show. There were uh, many explosions. They blew up basically all the buildings on the site. So they have done something there that would not allow them to easily uh, conduct another test. Now, whether they have another site somewhere or they have another plan, we don't know at this point. I know, uh, Ben, you said it's been in the middle of the night, but do you have any sense of what the reaction will be from North Korea since, you know, there has been some indication that the president was thinking about making this move? Yeah, you know, we, on this trip so far, we've not been able to talk to any regular people, any North Korean citizen, but the government guides that we've been with, I can tell you, I think they're going to be disappointed. This has been a topic of conversation. They have wondered. Uh, if this was going to happen, you could tell that there was a sense here that people were looking forward to the summit, that something might come out of it. But there also was kind of a, a harder line than I expected that we would run into here. People saying we think it may not happen or perhaps uh, things aren't going to get resolved with the United States. So I, I, I think they were kind of hedging their bets here. There certainly will be huge disappointment in South Korea where President Moon really has staked a lot of his reputation and presidency on figuring this issue out. And if, uh, if President Trump and Kim Jong-un don't meet, uh, whether that's June 12th or ever, uh, that's going to be a real setback for him. And Ben, what do you make of the Chinese role in all of this? And what do you expect uh, China to do in the wake of this announcement? Well, it is interesting. You know, President Trump uh, a couple of days ago, you know, kind of blamed China, said that it was after Kim Jong-un went and met with uh, Xi Jinping in uh, Dalian, China, a couple of weeks ago, that the tone seemed to change. And he seemed to be intimating that China was telling Kim Jong-un to take a harder line on this. Uh, we have no idea if that's actually the case or if that's just a coincidence. Uh, China certainly did reinsert itself back into the process. For a long time, China was on the sidelines and not real happy about it. So clearly, China and North Korea quickly mended their relationship. Um, where it goes from here, who knows? You know, the United States has needed China to enforce these sanctions. Because China accounts for the vast majority of North Korea's trade. So if China has a close relationship with North Korea and then the United States is not willing to work on these issues with North Korea, you could see a shift in how willing China is to help on sanctions. All right, Ben Tracy, inside North Korea on a train as he is leaving that nuclear site uh, there. Coverage will continue throughout the day on your local news and on this CBS station and in our 24-hour streaming network, CBSN. You can watch it at cbsnews.com. And we'll have a complete wrap-up tonight on the CBS Evening News with Jeff Glor. Many of you will return now to, your CB to CBS this morning. This has been a CBS News special report. I'm Gail Kane with Nora O'Donnell and John Dickerson, CBS News, New York. For news 24 hours a day, go to cbsnews.com. To Rio de Janeiro. Go get your car. It's time for Let's Make a Deal. Now here's TV's big dealer, Wayne Brady. Hey everybody, welcome to Let's Make a Deal. I'm Wayne Brady. Thanks for tuning in. Who wants to make a deal? The Lumberjack Jill. The Lumberjack Jill. Have a seat, have a seat. Hey, Emma. Hi. You got something in your beard, you gotta... I got a lot of stuff in this beard, man. I can't keep it out. Do you just want to pull that down so America can see your face? Thank you. And it makes it easy for the security cameras to identify you later on. <laughs> so what are you doing? Where are you from? Um, I'm from Seattle, Washington, and I'm an ER nurse. Give a round of applause an ER nurse. 
I like that. See, this makes sense. It makes sense that you'd come to the show because an ER nurse, it's stressful, life and death. So on your day off, you want to go have some fun. That's right. So tell me one way to save a life. One way to save a life, just don't do anything stupid that you're going to have to end up in the ER showing everyone. That Say that to the camera. Say that to the internet. Listen, internet. Don't see stuff on YouTube and think, I could do this better, and we should film it, because then you're gonna come see me, and all my coworkers gonna make fun of you when we're outside of your room. And that's with insurance. It's true, it's true. So, I'm gonna make a deal with you where I will give you $200 times whatever you roll, or you take the big box. Ooh. You know what? This is my first time on the show. I feel like I should go for the big box. Sure. Roll, and let's see what you would have taken home. A 10 you would have had $2,000. <laughs> Tiffany, what's in the box? It's a home theater. Watch your favorite movies on this 55-inch 3D TV with a curved screen for optimal viewing and a premium wireless sound system. Plus, snack better with four giant tins of gourmet popcorn from Cucuruza, including butter and sea salt, salted caramel, and more tasty flavors. This deal's worth $3,696. Congratulations, Emma. Give her a big round of applause. Have a seat. Who wants to make a deal? One person. Who wants to make a deal? Uh, Sandra. Come on over here, Sandra. Everybody else have a seat. Everybody else sit down. Sandra, nice to meet you. Now, is it Sandra or Sandra? Sandra. Sandra, what do you do? I'm a school counselor in San Diego. You're a school counselor. Yeah, so, yeah. what's a good piece of advice that you'd give uh, to, to a young person trying to make it today? Oh, my God. That is touching. <laughs> so, I will give you $200 times. Come on over here, sweetheart. Time is the number that you roll right here. I've got some dice for you. It's easy peasy. So I would love to give you some money, or I'll give you curtain number two. How about that? Now, it's a lot to think about because it's money. Oh, she's giving the dice back to me. Curtain. So you're passing on the roll? Yep, yep. Let's do the curtain. So you don't want the cash? No. OK, how about I just let you roll just for fun, and let's see how much money you would have had. A nine who had $1,800. Yeah, notice that little dance stopped real quick, didn't it? It was a... Oh, no. That's why I asked if you wanted to give up the cash. Because you know the curtain... I have curtain, hope, I have hope. But uh, that could be a zonk. Not today. Okay. <laughs> Tiffany. Hey, Tiffany Coy. Hey, Wayne Brady. What's behind that curtain? Let's see. Good luck. Thank you. It's a Velcro living room. It's a Velcro living room. <laughs> now, but see, I would use this as a teaching moment. You could tell one of the students to, just because you get zonked, you get back up again. So give us a positive piece of uh, spin on this. Just persevere. Persevere. I'll try again. Okay, I'm patient. I'm patient. Okay, so nice to meet you, Sandra. Thank you, my dear. I want to do this again. You. Everybody else, have a seat, have a seat. Hello, hello, dear. You Marcella, Marcella? Marcia. Marcia. But I'm Wayne's Day, your daughter. You forgot about me. Oh. Wayne's Day, Brady. Well, I don't know if I'm old enough to have a grown child like you. You are a grown woman. How grown do you think I am? Grown enough to look like that in that dress? You're not my damn daughter. <laughs> So, same deal for you. Same deal, we've done it twice, we'll do it one more time. Thank you, Mr. Mangum. Come on, come on over here. Nervous, boy. The last two, the last two deals, they all passed on the money. But you seem like you like the money. I like money. So I'll give you $300 times whatever you roll. Or you take this small box. So what do you think? Roll the dice. Jonathan, what's in the box? Oh, man, right there. 
I gotta show you. Oh my God! I'm on the floor! It was a Honda Fit. This Honda Fit LX features a fuel-efficient economy mode, ample cargo capacity, and a multi-angle rear-view camera. The steel is worth $17,765. Oh, my God. Sweetheart, you missed out. Man, never in the history of our show named the Maury Springer Show have I ever seen. So you just, wow. I can't believe I missed out on a car. I really wanted a car. Mm, you know what? I did. I know, I know. Can, can we do like a remix version? You wanna do a remix? Oh sure, Cat, hit it. Yeah, 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 no. Okay. You, you got me all excited. I... But you are gonna, <laughs> thanks Cat, but you are gonna, Roll for cash. We are going to give you three hundred dollars. I'm excited about cash. So, if you get twelve times three, thirty-six hundred dollars. Roll them up. And five. All right, you got fifteen hundred dollars. Give a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Mama. Have a seat. Well, let's make a deal right after this. Macy's Star Rewards Program is now for everyone. Enjoy Star Money Days, perks and offers, and a birthday surprise no matter how you pay. Star Rewards. Bigger, better, and now for everyone. Sign up in-store or online. These birds, once affected by oil, are heading back home thanks to Dawn. Rescue workers only trust Dawn because it's tough on grease yet gentle. I am As the one who's always trapped beneath the duvet, I'm begging you, take Gas-X. Your tossing and turning isn't restlessness, it's gas. Gas-X relieves pressure, bloating, and discomfort fast, so we can all sleep easier tonight.